Hey everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we are going to see how to use Hot Reload in Godot version 3.1 and by doing so we are going to modify our scenes and tweak variables during runtime. This means that our game is going to be running while we are modifying our game. Before getting started, let's take a look on the demo created for this tutorial. Our game scene is composed by a tile map which holds our map for the game and a player which has a script that makes it behave as a platformer character. By playing the demo, you can see that our player can move around and jump. We also can go down on our map, but you can already see some of the problems that we have inside of this map. First of all, we cannot go back. Also, if you try to go to the right side of our map, we are not going to be able to jump to the platform on top. And also, the controls for our player aren't really snappy. So these are the things that we are going to fix. And besides that, if we try to shoot, you can see that our bullet is flying up, when in reality it should be going horizontally. So these are the problems that we're going to fix using Hot Reload in Godot. Now usually to fix these problems that we just saw on our demo, what we would do is stop the execution of our game, go to our tile map for instance, and start placing tiles until we think that it's going to work as we intended, and then play the game again, test, see the differences and see if everything is working as expected, and then make changes once again by going back to the editor and restarting the process all over again. We can make this process faster by going to the debug and having both sync sync changes and sync script changes turned on. This is going to make sure that whenever we have some changes made on our editor and also on our scripts, they are going to be synced to the game which is currently running. Let's see that in action by playing our game. If I go to the right, we can already see the new tile that we just placed, but when we go down, you can see that we still need a tile down here, so let's go back to the editor while our game is still running and select a tile. In this case, I'm going to select the ground and place it here. You can see that we have to fix this because it's not looking great. Let's place a wall over there and go back to the game. And now, as you can see, the change that has been synced because we have the sync sync changes turned on on our editor. This allows us to keep making changes to our map and at the same time, play test them to see if everything is working as intended. Here we need another tile, so let's place it right here. And now we can go back to the game and see the changes that we made in action. Now, one problem that I stated before is that our character is not snappy. And if we try to jump on top of this tile, you can see that we are not going to be able to do so. For me, this is an example where syncing changes really shine because we can tweak variables and don't stop our game execution. This way we can keep testing them and see if it's feeling all right. So let's go back to our editor, select our player, and here on the movement speed, jump force and gravity, we're going to start tweaking them. So let's increase the value of our move speed to something like 500. Go back to the game, test. Now our character is already feeling a lot more snappier. And the jump is still feeling weird. So I'm going to increase the jump force to 850 and also our gravity or else our player would just keep flying up and that's not what we want. So I'm going to increase the gravity to something like 2400. Let's go back to the game. All right, now this already feels much better. And you can see that we didn't have to stop the execution of our game in any time to do these changes. Also, if we close our game, the changes are not going to go away. So you don't have to worry about remembering numbers or anything like that. Now, the last issue that I talked about was the fact that our player was shooting bullets up and down instead of horizontally. So let's play the game once again to see that in action. As you can see, whenever I try to shoot, the bullets are going either up or down. If we go back to the editor with our game running and open our player script, we're not going to go into detail of how this script is working because it's not the scope of this tutorial. But if we go all the way to the bottom, you can see that we have a function called shoot. Here we are instantiating our bullet and then initializing it by passing to it a direction. And here we can see the mistake that was made. We are using a vector 2 up when in reality we should use a vector 2 dot right, which is going to be multiplied by a variable that goes from minus 1 to 1, which is going to dictate the direction in which the bullet should fly, either to the right or to the left. So let's change the up to right, save our script go back to our game while it's still running and now if we try to shoot you can see that the bullet is flying to the correct direction. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you happen to make a mistake in your script while you have hot reload activated the execution of our game is going to be paused. So I'm going to type anything here and save 
our game, you can see that we are going to get an error in our debugger. And if we go back to our game, we're not going to be able to move because the execution has been paused. And to continue playing with our game, all we have to do is fix this mistake by deleting all of this nonsense, save our script once again, and this is still is not going to resume the execution of our game. What we have to do, and this probably needs some improvement in terms of UX, is click on our pause icon here. And by pressing it, we are going to go back to the game and we are going to be able to play once again. Now lastly, what we want to do is fix this part right here. So let's go back to our 2D view on our editor, select our tile map. Here we are going to make some type of stair for our player to jump, some platforming section. Go back to the game and now we can test our new platforming section on our game. Now, some things to keep in mind when using hot reload is one, the ready function is not called once again when you make changes to either your scene or to your code. And we can confirm that by going to our player. And here we are going to recreate our ready function. And all we're going to do here is just put some simple print statement and save our script. Now, if we play our game, you can see on the output that we have hello from ready. But if we change this from ready to ready to save our script and go back, you can see that that function is not going to be called once again. If you want your ready function to be called after you make changes, you have to create your own functionality to reload the scene. In this case, here on our unhandled key input, we are checking for the UI cancel. And whenever that's pressed, we are going to reload our current scene, which in this case is our player. So if you go back to our game and we go all the way here to the right and we press ask that scene is going to be reloaded and you can see that we got the new print statement from our ready function which is hello from ready number two and another thing to keep in mind and this is something that i haven't found a way to work around so if you have a solution feel free to leave them in the comment section is the fact that if you make changes to scenes they're not going to be reflected in the instances of that scene let me show you what i mean by going back to the editor and opening the bullet scene go back to the 2d view and if we select our bullet, you can see that we have a movement speed here. And as of now, it's set to 1000. So let's change it all the way to 100. This is going to make our bullet move really slow. And if we save our scene, and as you can see on the debug, we have both sync, sync changes and script changes. So both are turned on. So let's go back to our game. And now if we try to shoot, you can see that the speed of our bullet is still the same. And even if we try to reload our player, and try to shoot once again, nothing changes. So in this case, what we have to do is stop the execution of our game and play it once again. And now those changes that we made to our bullet scene are going to take effect. So these are just two things that you have to keep in mind when you are working with hot reload. And that might save you some trouble if you're trying to debug or create some type of functionality that's going to need the ready function or either changing variables on other scenes that are going to be instantiated during runtime. Now, as you could see, using Hot Reload really helps to make your workflow faster and also more interactive. As always, the complete project that you just saw is available on GitHub. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.